Hello viewers and welcome to Export Digest, your number one program that periscopes the non-oil export sector. On this program, we propose non-oil exports as Nigeria's alternative economic mainstay, highlight the opportunities therein, and explore strategies to exploit these opportunities. We also seek to identify and profile solutions to challenges in the export sector to enable practitioners and policy makers alike craft a way forward in improving on their respective roles. I am Femi Boyede. My name is Ken Okawa, the president of the National Association of Nigerian Traders, NAS. I have been a C. Uruaba, personal development trainer, public affairs analyst, and an entrepreneur. Keep watching Export Digest. Export Digest. Don't change it out. As we seek the way forward out of the woods of economic recession, we need to appraise the template Nigeria has for administering export business and selling outside Nigeria. Quite a number of organs of the government play major roles in helping to shape economic activities, and a chunk of them are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that goods and commodities are discovered, packaged for export, and marketed, allowing profit to be generated over transactions involving each of such items. Some of them hold the mandate to make the export business conducive for Nigerians to fully participate in. Others play regulatory roles. An X-ray of the efforts of these ministries, departments and agencies will help understand how export businesses, be they big factories or cottage industries, can benefit from their services. This engagement will also enlighten us on those policies needing review or more attention. Let us begin with the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. We felt that there was a need in line with Central Bank's core mandate to look at price stability at the time. That if we favor price stability at this time, in which case signal it, an interest rate movement that will curtail inflation that when we curtail inflation a lot more stakeholders in interests or yeah, interest would have been um, sort of met. We all know the size of diaspora forms that could that flow into this country and we thought that what we should do is that that foreign currency that flows into the country through the likes of international money transfer organizations, Western Union, MoneyGram, Riyadh, and the rest of them, that those foreign currency should flow through into the borrowed exchange market so as to help to moderate and dampen the effects of price. Another agency very directly involved with export business is the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC. Indeed, it is the mandate of the Nigeria Export Promotion Council to formulate policies and develop strategies that will boost Nigeria's participation in world trade. Now, the Zero Oil Plan is a very bold uh, strategic plan. And what it says is that, look, we have we identify some export sectors and uh, we use three criteria to identify those sectors. One, it must be a sector that is trading above $20 billion internationally. If it's not, we're not interested. Uh, remember, we're looking for $30 billion yes. uh, to look for. Then it must be a thing where we have some, some technology uh, about it and it's not too difficult for us to get into that market. And uh, lastly, the uh, third criteria is where we have uh, competitive and comparative advantage. So we've identified these sectors. The Bank of Industry, BOI, has an important part in the export business value chain. 
so is the Bank of Agriculture, BOA, and indeed, in a greater capacity, the Nigeria Export-Import Bank, Nexo. This is a country that is highly blessed. We have a lot of agricultural resources across the country, all the 36 states. Then, vast mineral resources. In fact, the Raw Material Research and Development Council set up a committee some years back, headed by Professor Bamiro, former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan, and they were able to identify all the raw materials in 704 local governments of this country, which means that every local government has one form of raw material or the other that, if well harnessed, can form very good business. If it's agricultural, you're talking about value addition. Agriculture can become, when you process agriculture, you can either process it into food or into industrial input. Right? Solid minerals, he talked about rough diamonds the other time, right? 44 of them have been identified in commercial quantity that can be exported out of this country. A lot of money can be made out of those uh, uh, natural resources. And the developmental impact of engaging in the primary production as well as the value addition, processing of those raw materials is much higher than obtains in the oil sector where you have oil and gas. The, the, the multiplier effects per unit of investment is much higher in agriculture and soil minerals than you have in the oil and gas sector. How many workers are employed in that sector? Even though that sector accounts for about 90% of our foreign exchange, right? But in terms of job creation, that's a developmental impact. A lot more can be achieved if we develop areas in which we have competitive advantage that can be effect effectively and efficiently converted into competitive advantage. So that's where the enlightenment comes in. Entrepreneurship from school sensitize our youths to the business environment in which they are operating. And then what are the areas, what are the businesses that can be successfully undertaken in those environments? We are talking about being able to produce goods and services. You need to come up with a business model. Let's all simplify a uh, business model. What are you trying to produce? How do you want to produce it? What is the value proposition? Who and who will be willing to part with their money in a return for the goods and services that you are producing? We are a huge market. We are more than 170 million. And because we are not landlocked, and we are surrounded by a lot of um, landlocked countries, so from West Africa alone, we are looking at a market of three to 400 million. Right, you can service all those countries from Nigeria, and then look at um, East Africa as well, as far as the uh, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. So the market opportunities are huge in this area. We can import a lot through the sea, and we can also export through the sea. So we are blessed. So in terms of uh, potentials, it's just that our people need to be sensitized. And then oil. We need to shift our eyes from oil to the real sector. Because over the years, we are distracted by oil. And we neglected all these areas, right? So we need to go back to the business. The facilities were established to complement other existing export financing facilities to improve access of exporters to concessionary finance, to support the, finance, the commercial banks to increase their lending to the sector, to earn more foreign exchange, to create jobs and to attract new investments. This facility is not a grant, it's a loan. You collect, you pay. Mm. <laughs> you collect, you pay. So it's not a grant, it's a loan. So, but for the other aspect of the grant, I think you people can work for it. There's no minimum under the facility, but the maximum is five billion per enterprise. So a company, an enterprise can avail up to five billion, uh, but there is no minimum. But you see, the issue is that, an exporter doesn't have to be a big exporter because you can have what you call uh, cottage exporters. The federal government says it is sad that despite producing 50% of the world's cassava, Nigeria exports less than 1% of its produce. 
The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development confirmed Nigeria produced 53 million tons of cassava in 2013 valued at $16 billion, but exported cassava produce valued at $1 million. Federal government says it is discouraging that women get lesser returns despite contributing more cassava production across the country. Comfort Away represents the Ministry of Agriculture. We are the highest producer of cassava. But we hide under the umbrella because of more land area actually we are put to cassava. But the yield per hectare is low compared to India, where you are having 30 tons per hectare. Nigeria, we are having between 10 to 15 tons per hectare with all the, the, uh, the present agronomical practices on it. So it's still low. Director of Central Africa for International Institute of Tropical Agriculture said Nigeria as the largest producer of cassava globally would mean nothing if the country could not lift citizens out of poverty. He explained the values of growing cassava. Improved agronomy includes a lot of things including good nutrient management, fertilizer use, planting dates, weed control and all sorts of other specs that allow the potential to be realized. Meanwhile, the importance of growing cassava for export continues to emerge. We don't, even, we don't have value to our cassava so that we can have it enough to even export for foreign exchange earnings. And you know that will help Nigeria if we do that. So we need, in the cassava now, we need good quality cassava flour. A lot of initiatives to produce high quality cassava flour. What you can do with that is unimaginable. It's a wheat substitute, wheat flour substitute for bread making. In other places in Mozambique and uh, Ghana it's uh, raw material for breweries. You can brew beer from cassava. It's basically a, a source of, of starch, of flour for a lot of byproduct. Commercial banks are also empowered to fund export businesses. Present economic realities have compelled many of them to think outside the box to develop products that will better favor export businesses. As export business requires a lot of homework, many of them tread cautiously. Hello, I'm Denise. My name is Yinka Titiloye. I'm a farmer. Welcome to the Eater Grow Model Farm. I'm Craig Waters from Oklahoma State University. Watch Export Digest. Watch Export Digest. Watch Export Digest. I would say things are really, really bad. A situation where 56 of our members just closed shop in one year, and many more are barely managing to re remain afloat, means that the situation is really, really bad. It's bad because of their own inability to source the foreign exchange they need for their operations. It's bad because some of their raw materials have been classified as not valid for foreign exchange. Majority of them haven't been able to access foreign exchange. They have been buying at foreign exchange from the black market, despite the fact that their raw materials are qualified to access foreign exchange at the future market. But because it wasn't available, they could not get it. Infrastructure, basic infrastructure, power, is one of recent gas and most of these manufacturing plants are driven by gas are powered by gas today most of our members don't have access to gas due to militancy uh, in the country our rail system is not working effectively so we end up using the roads and those roads keep getting bad every time most of the roads are network across this country today are in bad shape. And these are part of the challenges that we have. Do you want to export to the European Union? Are you interested in getting into the European market? Export Help Desk is there to help you. The Export Help Desk is an online service that advises you on how to export to the European Union. This free service provides you with the information you need to sell your product in Europe and make the most of the opportunities on offer. Indeed, the European Union is the world's largest single market. However, 
Maybe you feel that you lack information on how to export to the EU and how to meet EU standards. Yet the information is here. The Export Help Desk is an easy tool to use. Let's have a look. Imagine you wish to export your coffee to the European market. How? Click on My Export. Firstly, find the code your coffee has in the European classification of goods by clicking on Find My Products Code. You can type your product's name in the search box or browse the database. You will find, for example, that the code for roasted and not decaffeinated coffee is 090-121-0000. Then select the country of origin, the destination country, and a simulation date. Click Search. All the information you need is just there. The standards that apply to your coffee appear under the Requirements tab. How much it will cost you to access the EU market appears under the Tariffs tab. If you benefit from a trade arrangement that will allow you to pay less to enter the EU, another tab will appear. On the Requirements tab, you will find all the necessary criteria that your coffee needs to meet in order to enter the EU, the documents to fill and a contact in the EU dealing with this topic. On the Tariffs tab, you will find the duty applying to your coffee the quotas, possible anti-dumping measures, and if you benefit from a more advantageous rate. If so, you will find a third tab explaining the preferential trade arrangement you can benefit from and how to proceed. But the Export Help Desk is more than that. You will also find more information about how the EU market works, trade statistics to do your market research, and other resources to help you. Don't forget that we are there for you and willing to help if you have a specific question. Export Help Desk website is easy to use. Indeed, the procedure is the same whether you are looking for information about coffee, fish or car exportation. Export Help Desk, your one-stop shop to access the European market. My name is Yinka Titiloye. I'm a farmer. Welcome to the Eta Grow Model Farm. I'm Craig Waters from Oklahoma State University. Watch Export Digest. Watch Export Digest. Watch Export Digest. In subsequent episodes, we shall take a look at the various available markets existing, partnerships and special agreements. Be part of our Export Readiness Workshop which holds on November 16 and 17 at the Nikon Luxury Hotel Abuja. During the two-day event, you will be armed with unique export solutions that will catapult your export business to profitable levels and spur your creativity on if you are yet to start your own export business. The information is now showing on your screen. Kindly get in touch through our communication channels to confirm your attendance and register accordingly.
the president of the National Association of Nigerian Traders, NAMS. I have been a CEO of personal development trainer, public affairs analyst and an entrepreneur. Keep watching. Export Digest. Export Digest. Don't change it out. The Corporate Affairs Commission, as you are now aware, has been doing a lot to improve Nigeria's business environment. Let us again learn one of those things that they do to make it easy for you and I to operate a business in Nigeria. The integration of electronic stamping to the company registration process is one of the key reform initiatives as part of measures to improve the investment climate and improve our ranking in the Doing Business Index. At present, the stamp duty is being done manually and is not integrated to the Commission's process. On our own part as a Commission, we have tried to simplify the process by providing accommodation to the stamp duty offices in almost, in, in almost all our offices nationwide so that any customer that walks into the Commission to register a company does not have to go to another office outside the Commission to process his stamp duty. So, as part of these measures, we now decided to provide office accommodation at no cost to FIRS stamp duty offices. But we've realized that that is actually not enough. We are taking it further by integrating the process of stamp duty to company incorporation, so that at the point of submitting your application for incorporation electronically, you will be able to now stamp your documents electronically, pay the stamp duty, and get the documents stamped without having to come to CAC or having to go to FIRS to submit any physical document for stamping. That has already been agreed to by the FIRS. The vendor that developed the company registration portal has been commissioned by the FIRS to do the integration to develop the stamp duty interface and integration process. So we've ag already agreed on that. The costing has been agreed. And the timeline for implementation, for development and implementation has been agreed. So we're hoping that by the end of the next quarter, that is by 1st October 2016, the electronic stamping interface will be available such that a customer does not even need to submit physical documents, either to FIRS or to CAC. Once you upload your documents through the company registration portal or on our website, the documents will be automatically stamped. You will receive an electronic stamp as evidence of payment of stamp duty, together with a printout of acknowledgement, and electronic stamp will be embossed on the document, and the process of registration will go on, and a certificate of Wow, how time flies. We have come to the end of yet another exciting episode of Export Digest. We hope you had duly and dutifully acquainted yourself with the specific role played by each of the trade support institutions that the Nigerian government has put in place to ease your business and export operations. Thank you so much for watching. We do hope that you are getting more and more motivated to exports with the possibilities that are unfolding and getting yourself export educated. As you well know, our goal remains to continue to expand your knowledge and enhance your readiness to export. Please remember you can watch this particular episode and others before it on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash export digest. Please continue to send in your comments, observations, and contributions as this helps us in our march toward making Nigeria a viable exporting nation and lead our viewers into the hidden secrets of export treasures. Our channels of communication are open and have been scrolling on your screen. Hello, I'm Denise. My name is Yinka Titiloye. I'm a farmer. Welcome to the Eta Grow Model Farm. I'm Craig Waters from Oklahoma State University. Watch Export Digest. Watch Export Digest. Watch Export Digest. Many thanks to our supporters and to you, our esteemed viewers. 
Please note that Export Digest is still seeking for sponsorship and support. By showcasing your business goods and services on this program, you will not only be helping us to pay for our airtime and cost of production, you will also be expanding the corporate mileage that you get for your brand, products and services. We therefore invite you to come on board by calling us today and you will not regret it. My name is Ken Okawa, the president of the National Association of Nigerian Traders, NAS. I have been a C. Uruapa, personal development trainer, public affairs analyst and an entrepreneur. Keep watching. Export Digest. Export Digest. Don't change it out. Join us same time on this same channel next week for another eye-opening package of Export Digest. I remain yours sincerely. Femi Boyede. See you again and God bless Nigeria.